The Mesa Chamber of Commerce Inside Business Podcast brings you a unique view of Mesa through its vibrant business community and the subjects that are important. The podcast is produced in the Mesa Chamber of Commerce Media Studio, sponsored by the University of Phoenix. Our podcast is hosted by Mesa Chamber of Commerce CEO Sally Harrison. Please enjoy this episode of the Mesa Chamber Inside Business Podcast. Good morning. I'm Sally Harrison, the president of the Mesa Chamber of Commerce. And today I have the honor of having my friend Noel Thomas with Zero Trafficking in our studio. Ah, Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad you're here. All the way from Florida. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is good. So, Noel, before we get started, let's talk about your background because um, your background is not in fighting trafficking. That's right. Um, A a rock band. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. I started in a rock band and did uh-huh. a little tour around the world. Uh huh. And then I uh, got exposed to the issue of human trafficking via a flyer. A flyer. That's right. What country were you in? Uh, I believe I was in England when I first got that flyer about mm-hmm. human trafficking. Uh huh. And tell us what happened then. Well, uh, so we were on an internationally touring uh, um, tour, I guess, and had gone all over the world. And I got this flyer about human trafficking, and I was thinking. You know, this is this is wild. I've I've learned a lot about clean water issues and poverty <laughs> and, and all these sort of things, but I've never heard about human trafficking. So uh-huh. this is in 2007, and I wanted to learn as much as I possibly could. So I started watching documentaries and and reading the stats, and I learned that there was 32 million people that were enslaved worldwide. So that's an unbelievable number. That's right. It, you know, it was much higher than than I expected, and yeah. it affects you know. Uh, men, women, children, in, in all sorts of walks of mm-hmm. society. So, you know, I had to see it firsthand, and I took a team over to India. Uh, we did a short documentary on the children of the brothels, and I saw uh, this law enforcement agent that was actually facilitating the sale. Oh, that uh, makes me sick. I know, this little girl, and it, it was it stuck with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, this quote from Edmund Burke where he said that all it takes for evil to prevail is for good people to do nothing. Mm-hmm. And so... We used the band as a platform to raise awareness, and that was kind nice. of the genesis of what's and, ultimately what And that was 2007, you 2007. said? 2007. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, that's happened since then. A lot has happened. So talk about what is trafficking, because not everybody understands really what that entails. Absolutely. So the, uh, the base threshold for human trafficking is force, fraud, and coercion. And that can be into sex trafficking, labor trafficking, or even organs uh, being sold on the black market. Oh, gosh. So it, it spans a lot of different... Um, uh, elements of, of crime. Um, but these individuals, you know, f- for many different circumstances, either they're lured into trafficking or mm-hmm. they fall in hard times. These traffickers prey on the most vulnerable of society, usually right. those that have been hit really hard. Uh, talk about how that affects the U.S. and specifically Arizona. Yes, absolutely. So uh, the U.S. Is, is a country that has a lot of human trafficking, both labor and sex trafficking. Uh, we often think that it, it only occurs in third world countries or, or other countries, but uh, it happens right in our backyard. Mm-hmm. And uh, I come from a little small town in Florida, and the human trafficking um, operation there is located between the barber shop and the pizza shop. And, oh, gosh. you know, so it's it's oftentimes right in plain sight. And that's most certainly the case in, in Arizona, mm-hmm. where we're seeing uh, illicit massage brothels that double over as human trafficking fronts. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're seeing various forms of labor trafficking. Uh, and, and of course, issues uh, along the border are also creating an opportunity for those that are vulnerable coming from other countries can right. be exploited by these traffickers. Uh, it's just so unbelievable to think that that happens in our country. I know. Absolutely. It's crazy. So 2007, you get a flyer. That's right. And you pulled friends together. Mm-hmm. Talk about how zero trafficking was started Who's involved? I, I know you have a team. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we, we started raising awareness with the band. And so every time we play a show, we'd talk about human trafficking and how mm-hmm. it's a $150 billion industry that's fueling cartels and terrorists. And, and, uh, and so we use that platform to raise awareness about human trafficking. And from there, I started a nonprofit. The nonprofit did a road show going to <laughs> churches and communities and schools and anyone that would just listen to this message. Sure. Uh, so this was on the front end of, of raising awareness uh, of human trafficking. 
Um, from there, I was brought on to be the statewide counter trafficking coordinator in Florida. So mm -hmm. uh, working under Rick Scott to set up safe houses, manage appropriations. And um, it was there that I was working with these task forces, both federal and local law enforcement. And I saw that they were manually clicking on these advertising sites online. And I thought there's got to be a better way um, to create technology to speed this process up. And that mm -hmm. was the genesis and idea uh, which started zero trafficking in 2013. 2013. Okay. I was wondering mm -hmm. how long ago that was. Right. So it's been a few years. It's been a few years. And, yeah. Uh, you know, we've, we've grown as a team. Uh, we recently got funded and, and have been growing mm -hmm. our footprint in the fight against uh, human trafficking and organized and crime. And you have some military background in some of your team? Yeah. Some of our team has uh, a background in, in military intelligence, and, and we're very fortunate to have uh, a team team that has um, backgrounds in intel, in law enforcement, in, in legal, uh, and in technology. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of all these different walks and practices. Well, it's a great piece for everybody to come together to make that par that puzzle, right? That's right. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. So how does human trafficking connect to other crimes? Because I know that it doesn't stand alone. That's exactly right. So um, it's easy to see uh, the crime is a, almost a solo focus where you're looking at drugs or you're looking at human trafficking or weapons trafficking or terror. Uh, but we like to reframe it in that these are businesses of crime. This is Crimes Inc., if you will, or, or Terror Inc. Mm -hmm. and, and they're looking to make the most money um, and be profitable in a way that's least risky to them. Mm -hmm. And human trafficking happens to be one of the least risky elements of business in the criminal or terrorist organization because everyone's looking for drugs and weapons. Mm -hmm. And so being a $150 billion industry, uh, it's now the number two illicit trade right behind drugs and, and quickly, you know, it's catching up, catching right? up with drugs. Exactly. Yeah. So, and you think about it, the drugs can be sold one time, but a victim of human trafficking can be sold up to 15 times per day. So the, the economics of, of where these criminals and terrorists are going with this um, is exploiting this because they know that there's not the resources to fight back against human trafficking. And they know that it's been a low priority um, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so they've been able to fly under the radar in communities here in Arizona um, and elsewhere throughout the U.S. without much, much attention. And that's where we're, we're helping law enforcement and policymakers understand the, the Crimes, Inc. and, and how it uh, all fuels and funds itself through these illicit operations. Yeah. What is Zero Trafficking's network-centric approach? Talk, talk about how you, how you focus on that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I've seen now human trafficking from a lot of different angles, mm -hmm. and from awareness, from rehabilitation, um, and it's a very complex problem, as I've, I've come to realize. And, and thank God that there's nonprofits out there that, that work with the, the victims and set up sure. safe houses and provide services uh, where we saw the biggest gap as a technology firm and where we could uh, move the needle maybe the most in the fight against human trafficking was by on, focusing on the enterprise uh, criminal network mm -hmm. and by providing the, the data and analytics necessary to, to fight back against these, these networks. And so that's the approach that we've been taking. Uh, also, we really wanted to reduce the burden on the victim. As you can imagine, they've mm -hmm. been traumatized. And yeah. They're um, uh, maybe drug dependent, and um, and it's hard for them to prepare the testimony necessary to take down the criminal entities that um, facilitate their trafficking. Mm -hmm. So that's why the network-centric approach of, of going after the criminal enterprise removes that burden from the victim and provides deeper insights into the infrastructure of, of how these organizations work. You... <laughs> I don't know how you, as a team, deal with this every day because this is, I mean, it's pretty overwhelming how, how big it is and like how personal it must get for some of it, for some of the work that you do. Um, yeah. Well, more, you know, more power to you. A, a lot of trips to the beach and, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and playing music helps. Uh, I can imagine. You know. Yeah. So talk more about um, how they approach uh how does the approach eliminate the problems inherent with how human trafficking is currently being investigated and prosecuted? Because I know mm -hmm. that you guys can do all the work, right? But if it's not being dealt with 
um, by the judges and obviously police do their work, but you know, what, what, what happens with that? Yeah. So we're starting to see this, this trend shift away from, uh, the singular trafficker or, or pimp in, mm-hmm. and moving more into the organization and network. And this is huge because, uh, these large criminal infrastructures have a lot of finances that can go back into counter trafficking operations. And so, Uh, What's really great about the state of Arizona is that uh, the state has really embraced the innovation necessary with data and analytics and and tools to fight back against Mm -hmm. um, uh, organized uh, human traffickers. And I think that's going to start to show a shift here locally in Arizona as they they do these prosecutions, again, Mm -hmm. removing that burden from the victim and having more success in the case um, by going after the assets and and some of the infrastructure that Mm -hmm. supports these illicit operations, but um, we're, we've been very fortunate to work with both local um, uh, law enforcement and, and state law enforcement in the fight against human trafficking, and, uh, and I could say that, that there's a lot that the state has done um, to change policy, to change ordinances, to put the resources necessary yeah. behind this fight, and, and I really do think that Arizona is, is leading the way Uh, when it comes to the fight against human trafficking. Well, that's good because it sounds like our state is also leading the way in numbers of trafficking, right? That's right. Yeah, so I'm I'm glad that our uh, our state and specifically Mesa has stepped up to really do their part to fight it. I mean, I don't think most people understand what a big issue, what a big problem we have. Most people have no idea that it's happening right here. not just in Mesa, but, you know, obviously in the state. What what makes our state such a hotbed? I, I think that there's a, a few different issues. Um, one is the, the major freeways that pass through mm-hmm. here from, from California, you know, on the way to Texas and, mm-hmm. and down to Florida. Um, and so this is a, a stop for, for traffickers. I think the, uh, the other thing that um, makes it unique is um, – the border issues, you know, and, and right. challenges that, that come come along with that and and how criminals are uh, exploiting that um, for human trafficking purposes. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and the other thing is, is that it's it has been an evolving mindset to fight against the networks of human trafficking um, and, and, and changing that burden away from, from the victims. And so, um, though, you know, Arizona is leading the way, it's, it's taken time to to change those mindsets and change yeah. the way that we investigate and look at human trafficking and approach sure. it in a new way. Well, I'm, I'm guessing, too, that with our great weather that we have, mm-hmm. that that's got to play into it, sure. the outdoor activities that we have. Sporting events. Spring the training. The Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, talk about some of your successes. I, I know you've zero trafficking has had some big wins. Yeah. And it, talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, we've we've worked very closely with law enforcement and taking down um, uh, or providing the data necessary to take down human traffickers. And um, we've seen some successes in, in that space. Uh, a lot of it we can't quite talk about it because sure. they're still under investigation mm-hmm. and uh, and prosecution. But mm-hmm. um, but we're very proud of law enforcement uh, here in the state of, of Arizona that are are, are making big moves to fight against human trafficking. That's great. So why is Arizona important in this fight? You know, I, th- I think Arizona is important because it's really embraced uh, defense technologies and, uh, and innovation, artificial intelligence, mm-hmm. cybersecurity, and, uh, and that, that trickles, you know, down from uh, the top and, and goes uh, through policy throughout the state. There's been a lot of resourcing of, uh, of innovation. And mm-hmm. so everything from the universities that are, are spinning out innovation to um, law enforcement that's embracing innovation and the defense industry and, and others here that are located in Arizona, mm-hmm. um, it makes it really ripe for driving new and creative ideas yeah. uh, at this problem. And, um, and so we're, we're seeing that. Uh, in addition to that, there's uh, great financial analysis tools to fight back against human trafficking. Um, yeah. There's there's an approach to, to go after organized crime and these these networks 
And so I think it's the mindset, the culture, and the innovation, mm -hmm. and bringing those together creates synergy that allows uh, this to be a right place for fighting human trafficking. Well, and it's been fun to watch people come together for that fight. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that you've talked to several of our groups now because mm -hmm. they they know something's happening, but they don't know the details until you really share with them. Right. You talked about financial. Talk about that more. Uh, talk about the impact because you've thrown out some numbers before about sure. how much um, money comes through, say, one illicit massage parlor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we estimate about... 500000 to a million dollars per illicit massage brothel. There's close to 180 uh, in Mesa alone. And we're it's a big number that's being that's exported, number, right? Right. And, and taxes not being paid. Taxes not being paid. You've got money laundering. You've got money that's that's flowing out to, to other countries and, and supporting broader criminal organizations. Mm -hmm. um, but the the hope in this is and and the change that we're starting to see is that law enforcement has really taken the steps necessary to put in the ordinances. Yes, that's huge. Yes, and to step up the resources in, in the fight against human trafficking here in Mesa. And so, yeah. uh, you know, we're already seeing the fruits of, of those efforts. And, um, and uh, I think that the community is very fortunate to have um, law enforcement that, that truly cares mm -hmm. about this issue and, uh, and, and taking this off our streets. Yeah. I, I'm glad that you guys are here to help push that and, and uh, I guess, be a, a champion in education for that because, again, not everybody understands what's behind all this. I, I've had people say, well, why aren't, um, why aren't PD going in and busting, you know, when there's these massage parlors? Um, talk about the difference between busting the, the victim, the mm -hmm. the quote, prostitute, right? The, the girl who's giving the massage, the John, and then what you really want is to get deeper with the trafficker. That, that's right. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing is, is that you don't want to um, victimize further the, the person that's either labor trafficking, labor trafficked into prostitution or mm -hmm. the commercial sex trade or someone that is being uh, sex trafficked. Um, and so, and that's what we've seen in other states where Unfortunately, you know, they're the ones that are arrested right. for the crime and, and the burden is, is placed back on them after they've already been victimized. Right. And um, in, in, st in some states, they've enacted legislation that really puts harsh penalties, felony penalties on the buyers, which has been helpful in reducing the demand. Well, it's uh, supply and demand, right? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. Yeah. And so we're hoping to see more of that type of, of strong legislation against the buyers mm -hmm. um, where there's felony counts for, for yeah, buying commercial sex. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Texas has been very effective in, in that legislation. But, you know, ultimately, you want to break down the, the enterprise of, of crime that supports mm -hmm. that human trafficking. Yeah. And, um, and and start dismantling it from from there. Well, and your team's done from such a good job in connecting the dots. You, you've talked about how you've you've identified people that are trafficking here locally with other parts of the state and then other states too. I, that seems like a lot of um, I don't know. Uh, uh, legwork to finally get to the trafficker. But in the end, uh, it sounds like then you are able to uh, take down that, like you call it, an enterprise. Well, you know, we, we provide the data and analytics necessary. Uh, it's really the law enforcement mm -hmm. that does the sure. the heavy lift of, of the takedown and, and the raid. And um, and we've been, you know, fortunate with a team of data scientists uh, that can can help collect this data in a way that makes sense mm -hmm. uh, for law enforcement, and that's uh, that's been the focus of j is giving them the data that they need to do their jobs uh, awesome. effectively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to share? No, I just wanted to thank uh, you for having me on the air and uh, for everything Thanks. that the city has done to fight back against human trafficking and the groups that sit within the chamber that are passionate about this yeah, and asking yeah. 
you know, how can we get involved in, in, in already the connections that have been made just from, from being here and speaking to these groups. So just wanted to thank you for that. And, of course. Uh, and this time today. Well, hopefully you can put yourself out of business. Yes, that's the goal. Right? That's the goal. Yeah. Well, yeah. good. Maybe I'll DJ full time or something. Uh, there you <laughs> once, go. Once uh, human that trafficking's would be over. A, yeah. That would be a really good thing to have to happen. That's right. Awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate you coming in for the education. Um, and if there's updates, come back. Absolutely. All thank right. you very much. Thank you. This has been a Mesa Chamber of Commerce Inside Business Podcast. You can find all podcast episodes at iTunes, Spotify, or your own favorite podcast website. You can also find them online at mesachamber.org. Content of this podcast is copyright the Mesa Chamber of Commerce, unless otherwise noted.